Hi everyone, I'm here today to do the YouTube Pagan Challenge for August. And I've got the notes on my phone, that's why I'm looking down. I'm also a little bit sick, so if I'm clearing my throat or coughing, <clears throat> like that, um, that's why. And it's raining outside, so if you hear that, I apologize. And my notes keep disappearing. Oh, there they are. Okay. Um, so, <clears throat> this is like the fifth time I've tried to record this, so... And it's really hot in here. <laughs> um, okay. Number 32. Meditation techniques. So, I think there's two main types of meditation. There's active and passive. Active is where you're like moving while you're doing meditation. Say, walking, pacing, um, coloring, swimming, maybe even like gardening. I've sort of done that before, but you sort of have like meditative mindset. For me, I find that a little bit harder. Passive is more what most people think of when they think of meditation. Sitting, laying down, closing your eyes, clearing your mind, um, going into meditation that way. That's what I usually do, almost always actually. Uh, I like to listen to music when I do that on my earbuds, on my phone. Um, I have digitally downloaded from iTunes this CD called The 99 Most Essential Gregorian Chants. And as the name says, it's like Gregorian chanting music, which may sound kind of weird for most people probably, but it's um, it's kind of mellow and like I listen to it real quiet and it's um, very relaxing for me. It really helps me get into a real deep meditative state. And I know some people when they meditate listen, I mean, yeah, listen to um, like guided visualizations or meditations. And for me, those are those don't work as well because those, they tell you to like visualize a meadow or visualize this and you're walking down a path and all this and that's all well and good but when I meditate on my own I don't see things like that. I don't see um, like a movie type thing in my head like places, um, things like that, people, whatever. I see like swirls of color or like, I don't want to say clouds because that makes it sound like I'm seeing a sky of clouds, but like sort of like puffs of smoke or like cloudy things in a background of color, like at real abstract. It's not, it's not at all like a scene. So with the guided visualizations, I can imagine it to a point, but then when they say, but then they're like, and now all of a sudden you see your goddess figure. And I'm like, well, I don't know what to picture now, you know, cause like, I don't get into the meditative state that way. I'm like just awake and visualizing it. And then I'm like, okay, well now what am I supposed to be visualizing? I don't know. So that doesn't work for me. Okay, 33, gardening and foraging tips. So I've been gardening with like my mom pretty much since I was little. And um, pretty much as long as I can remember. And um, so then when I got a little older, I was allowed to have my own little garden patch and then when I like got real sick with my chronic illness, I had to stop for a long time. And then recently I've started back up with a small garden and some pots. Like last year I started back up with some pots and then this year I started my like little bitty in-ground garden and then still some pots and I'm enjoying it. So I wrote down some tips. So I'm gonna be like looking down at my phone because I don't wanna forget anything because some of these I think are pretty important to mention. So. Like the first one is get some good books or reputable websites um, to get good information to know things like um, how much sunlight, how much water each specific plant needs because all plants have different needs just like, I don't know, different people or something. Um, figure out what zone you're in. <clears throat> I, for example, I'm in, I believe it's zone 8B. Maybe it's 8A. I'm pretty sure it's 8B. Um, because that helps you know what weather and um, conditions your climate has so that you know 
when to plant plants, when to plant what plant, and um, things like that, what plants are good in your area, things like that. Um, I like to try to plant uh, companion, do companion planting, which means planting plants together that are beneficial to each other, rather than just planting like a bunch of cucumbers together, and a bunch of this together, and a bunch of A together, and a bunch of X together and stuff. It'd be planting like, interspersing certain plants together that are, um, that like A helps ward off the plant, the pest from B, and B helps ward off the pest from A, so you plant them together, things like that. Um, I like to stay as organic as possible, stay away from chemicals and things because I don't want to spray my vegetables with a bunch of chemicals and then have the chemicals soak into the vegetables and then eat them. Um, I like to try to plant flowers among my edibles. Sorry, I'm going to change positions here. Um, to attract, they're pretty, but to attract the pollinators. And for the companion planting reason, some like marigolds are really good for companion planting with a lot of vegetables. But they attract pollinators like bees and butterflies to help pollinate your uh, vegetables and everything. And um, there's a lot of good gardening channels on YouTube actually, like, um, I'll leave them down below, but MI Gardener's a good one, CaliChem29, that's one I watch. There's some other ones, um, there's one, her name's Vivi. She doesn't do a whole lot of like tips, but she shows you around and she's done some kitchen video tips and like how-tos, but not everything on her channel is how-tos. Um, but I can't remember the name of her channel, but I will link it down below. <clears throat> or at least put the name, if I can't figure out how to link it. So for foraging tips, the number one thing I can recommend is never, ever, ever eat anything if you're not 100%, and I mean 100%, not 99.9, 100% sure what it is. Because you could kill yourself, and I'm, I, I'm serious about that. You could literally kill yourself eating something you don't know what it is. By, you could poison yourself, you know? And that's, that's very serious. People do it every year, multiple people, you know? I mean, it's terrible. And pe I don't think people take that as seriously as um, it really is. But um, also one thing that I don't, I don't think people take very seriously is that, um, I mean, it's not like whatever, but um, is that you shouldn't harvest things that are by roads. Um, I think the rule, I mean, it's not like a law, of course, but the rule is like 50 to 100 feet of a road, you should not harvest within that area. You need to go farther than 50 to 100 feet within a road because of the pollution within the cars uh, gets into the plants and then you're, you don't wanna consume that or even if it's like sage and you're gonna burn it, then you'll, the pollution in the sage is there and you'll burn it into the air and then you'll breathe it in. Um, stuff like that. Or it, drink it in teas or anything. You don't want to consume those pollutants. Um, also, when you are harvesting, you want to go um, as far like up as you can. Don't, from especially from roads, um, like uphill to get away from runoff. Um, let's see, I think I put something else that I, that's not something I just all automatically remember. Oh, right. I always, like, I think about this one when I'm, like, out, but I don't remember it just when I'm talking about stuff. Um, is that you always want to just take what you need. Don't take excess. And a good, okay, I think it comes from, like, the Native Americans. I'm not positive about that. But, um, like, a rule of thumb is to only take one-third of what is naturally growing. You don't want to um, over harvest because you'll wipe the population population of the uh, plant out and it won't be able to grow back. And one thing I personally like to do, and I know a lot of pagans, Wiccans, people of that, sp spiritual people in general like to do is to ask the plant before harvesting. Like, you know, is it okay if I pick you or you know harvest from you and then leave some kind of offering such as water cornmeal um 
I don't know, a lot of people leave different things. Some people might leave like a, like seeds, um, different things. So that was a long answer for that one, I realized that. Um, 34, ritual knives and swords. So I don't use swords in my practice. I've never had any swords. I came across one at a thrift store one time. I wanted it so bad, but it was like ridiculously expensive. Anyway, I do have a couple knives. I think I've showed one or two of them in like hauls before, like way back on my channel. And I bought them with the intention of using them as athames, but I ended up using them a few times and they ended up feeling way too long. Like, um, I'm a pretty small person in general, like, I'm not super thin, especially right now, but, um, like, I'm very small boned, like, um, petite, I guess, and so, and short and everything, and so, like, the knives were just so long, I felt like they were just, like, overwhelmed, I felt like I was almost holding, like, a miniature sword, which just, it just, it just didn't feel right at all, and so, um, <clears throat> I don't know. So for a long, for quite a while, I was really wanting to find like the perfect athame that was like much smaller, like something like a six or seven inch blade. And even seven inch, I felt like that might be too long. I'm not really sure. Or like, I, I don't know. Um, well, like if the blade was seven inch, that would be too big, but maybe like a six inch blade or something. I really don't know. I'm not good at visualizing how big that is just in my head. Anyway, um, and I looked online and I would look when I went places and I just, sorry, I think I heard the phone ringing. Yep. And I, uh, never could, um, sorry about that. When our answering machine goes off, it goes, you've reached our last name, blah, 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 blah. And I don't exactly want y'all to know who I really am or, you know, my full name. <laughs> um, so what was I saying? Oh yeah, I was really looking for an athme and looking and everything, but then I was like, well, you know, if I'm meant to find one, I'll find it. And I really like, they're meant to, you know, direct energy anyway. And so that's really what most people use them for. And I've really always liked to direct energy with my hands because for the first, like, I don't know, like 10 years of my, no more than that, I guess, like, 12, 13 years of my practice, I'd never even heard of an athame. Like, I didn't even know what that was. I didn't, I'd never heard of it. didn't know that was a thing. So I just used my hands to direct energy and everything. And so, um, I don't know. That's just very natural to me. And so, I don't know. Now it's just kind of like, well, if I find one that really, I really connect with, I'll use it. I'll get it and, um, use it. But, if not, that's fine too. Ritual wands and staves. Um, I've never had a staff of any kind. Um, wands, I have three. One of them is like, I don't know if it's two pieces of wood or, well, I guess it'd have to be one that's just carved, but it's like um, spiraled, kind of like people took it and twisted, you know? And then it's got like a crystal on the end and like a, like a pointed, um, uh, a quartz and then like a round one on the other end and I was told when I bought it that it was one of a kind come to find out it's mass produced and tons of people have the same one and um, when I bought it I thought oh it looks so unique it's very cool but then like I never super connected with it and um, so I don't I don't really use, I've, I've used it a few times, but I don't really use that one. And then I have one that's sort of like a natural stick with like a round, it's a quartz point sort of, but it's like polished. So it's not really a point, but it, but it's sort of like that, you know, it's like elongated in the end. And then that's it. It's just very natural. And then I've got one that is just it's not a Harry Potter one, of course, but it's sort of like that where it's just like plain wood and then it's um, carved, but not really intricately. It's not like the handle part. It's got a handle part. I, I should have brought it down to show you. And then it just goes into a tip. 
but that really is one of a kind, a woman um, at the Renaissance Fair made it, and she had a bunch of different ones like that, and they were just like, um, and it was, it's supposed, it's not like a toy wand, you know, like people make, and they're like, oh yeah, these are Harry Potter wands, or whatever. Um, it was made to be like a real r ritual wand. Um, <clears throat> sorry, gosh, I hate being sick. And so that's the one I connect to most. I forget what kind of wood it is. Supposedly it's, um, I forget what kind, but everyone I've asked is like, oh, I've never heard of that. And um, asked about it, and I've looked it up online and like not really found anything. But she said it's blah, blah, blah kind of wood. And then it's the kind Mer supposedly Merlin's wand was made of. But then I've looked up like, Merlin's wand wood type and like came up with different with like different woods that were not that kind so I don't I don't know okay 36 right yeah 36 ritual cups and bowls I don't really have like a specific ritual bowl I use bowls but I don't have like a specific one or anything as far as cups go or chalices. I've got a little bitty silver chalice that's like really little and it's real silver but it tarnishes ridiculously easy. Like I can just leave it on my altar for like a few days not even touch it and I have polished it really nicely. Not even touch it and I come back and it looks like it's been like sitting there for a hundred years with like people touching it and like messing with it every day and like so tarnished and then it's like impossible to clean practically so hard and like it's not I think the I haven't used it in a while because of that so I think the like um stem I want to say it's called you know the part you grab it on is like this it'd be called the stem of a wine glass I know that which is like um some, it's got some kind of texture. It's not just plain. It's not just like smooth. I'm pretty sure. I remember, I, at least I remember that part being hard to clean. And then it's got a pentacle um, in, inscribed in it. Um, and that part's hard to clean. Uh, up on the um, cupish part. And so it's, and then the inside's hard to clean because it's so little. And you can like, I can like fit my thumb in there. And it's just, it's hard to clean. It takes so much silver polish. The silver polish gives me a migraine because it smells bad. It's just, it's awful. Anyway, so then I bought a glass, I, wine glass, I guess, that I use as a chalice. And it's, um, it's kind of small for a wine glass, kind of short. And it's got, um, it's fancy looking. It's got like, I don't want to say nubs, really, but <laughs> like pieces of, it's clear glass and they came in a few different colors but they were obviously not like that color glass they were like clear painted so I was afraid well if I get color one the paint's gonna eventually come off and I liked the clear anyway because it would go with more but the uh, clear one the, well they all had like you know as if they put like dots of glass and like designs around on the outside of it stuff like that Kind of like it when you if you took hot glue into that, but with glass, something like that. Um, so I, but anyway, I mainly use that more at like sabbats, um, big rituals, which I mainly only do with the sabbats, unless I'm doing like a big spell that really requires a lot of stuff, like um, uh, offerings. Um, Cause usually I don't put, I don't do like offerings of wine. I don't, I don't drink alcohol. Um, it gives me a migraine and uh, like even just a couple sips and I'm like, wow, major migraine, like immediately. So I don't, I don't drink. And um, <clears throat> yeah, so I really don't use it that often. So it's not, so like if I were to just not have one at all, I wouldn't feel like I was really missing something huge. It wouldn't be like, oh my gosh, I'm, you know, ah, I, I've lost something super important. But at the same time, like, I don't, I don't want to lose it, but you know, you know what I mean, hopefully. 
So those are the questions for August. Uh, I hope this video didn't end up being too long. And um, I hope you enjoyed and I will do September's hopefully pretty soon. Thank you for watching. Please comment and subscribe. I really like it when you guys comment and we can kind of get a, a conversation going.